Hello class, uh, welcome to the online session. We are going to touch on five slides for today. This will be the last slides for cardiovascular pathology. We are going to start with slide 1, 2, 5 as I have not discussed this with you. Uh, this is bacterial endocarditis followed by slide 11 amyloidosis slide 26 hypertrophic cardiomyopathy slide 166 cardi cardiac myxoma and 138 that is chronic passive congestion of the lung okay so for bacterial endocarditis this is slide 11 uh, you would see tracks of the myocardium here okay uh, and then this portion would already part of the half heart valve, this area. So you can see that there is a separation here. Okay, so this would be the, uh, maybe this is the wall. And then this would be part of the leaflet or the heart valve. So bacterial endocarditis would be caused by uh, bacteria. Uh, with inflammation of the heart valves. As you can see, there will be thickening in this portion of the heart valve and it would show the presence of granulation tissue, the presence of inflammatory cells. These are histiocytes. Okay. And then here you have presence of uh, thrombotic debris. Uh, the debris here would be composed of fibrin and uh, presence of bacterial colonies. Okay, so this would be bacterial colonies there. So, um, bacterial endocarditis, when you have here the thrombotic debris, this is the vegetation that we would see grossly. Okay, so uh, this, uh, the, the vegetations. Uh, present would be composed of the thrombotic debris of fibrin and bacterial colonies. So there are two types of infective endocarditis. We have the acute and the subacute. When you say acute, it is referring to the infection caused by a Staphylococcus aureus. And this particular infection would cause uh, damage to normal heart valves. It is very difficult to treat as it would require surgery and antibiotics. On the other hand, uh, we also have the subacute type of infective endocarditis. And this would be associated with involvement of previously damaged heart valves, like in elderly individuals or in some patients with prosthesis. Okay? So most common uh, infectious agent would be the Streptococcus viridans, although it can be also uh, all other organisms can be identified uh, in this case, like the HAACEK group of organisms, the HASEC, consisting of the Haemophilus, the Actinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, uh, Echinella, and Kingella, and prosthetic. Valves can also be affected or infected, and the most common culprit would be the Staphylococcus epidermidis. So, uh, if the rheumatic heart fever has a Jones criteria, the diagnostic criteria for infective endocarditis would be called the Jukes criteria. Okay, so next slide would be slide 11. This is amyloidosis. So the amyloidosis here uh, would be part of a systemic amyloidosis uh, which we would see with old age. This is called the senile systemic amyloidosis. And the type of amyloid that would be deposited here would be uh, derived or would originate from normal Transthyretin or the so-called TTR, although there have been cases of the mutant type of transthyretin being identified in some uh, patients or some cases. Uh, the type of, of uh, 
uh, cardiomyopathy in this case would be restrictive because it is similar to the fibrosis wherein you have uh, the thickening of the mycardial wall because of the deposition okay so you can identify the the muscle fibers the cardiac myocytes and then adjacent to it we have the presence of the deposits here here's another one okay this one would be uh, forming nodule and these are the amyloid deposits so the type would be derived from transthyretine okay ttr okay so uh, grossly the heart can be enlarged and uh, there can be subendocardial deposits i'm not sure if we can see it but we have to look for the outer surface if there is a uh, a free surface all over here and it can affect the uh, conduction system okay of the heart the Purkinje fibers because if they are affected it can cause arrhythmia so so amyloidosis can cause restrictive cardio cardiomyopathy and arrhythmia okay so next slide we have uh slide 26 this is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so hypertrophic cardiomyopathy would be a genetic disorder that causes uh, myocardial hypertrophy okay so this is caused by sarcomeric protein mutation to the beta myosin heavy chain to the troponin t to the alpha tropomyosin and the uh, myosin binding protein c uh, so uh, grossly this the, the hearts of this patient would manifest with enlargement of the heart uh, identified with hypertrophy or thickening, thickening of the wall especially of the left ventricle without dilation so there's what they call as the asymmetric septal hypertrophy so this is the gross diagnostic feature of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy it involves the left ventricle and the free uh, free wall of the left ventricle on the septum is thicker than that on the right ventricle with a ratio of 3 to 1 so that's asymmetric septal hypertrophy so histologically what we would see would be the presence of thickening of the myocardial fibers So you have the thickening of the myocardial fibers uh, here you have the nuclei and then what you can see is that there would be the myocardial disarray haphazard formation of the cardiac myocytes in this particular magnification you can already see this that there would be the presence of this irregularly arranged myocytes haphazardly arranged Okay, so some are going obliquely and some are going in this side. Okay, so although branching is a common feature for, for cardiac myocytes, but you would see them to be in different uh, positions. Okay, so this would be a diagnostic feature for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay. So next we have slide 166. Uh, this is cardiac myxoma. Uh, this is a uh, this is a tumor that would uh, be the most common uh, primary tumor of the adult heart because in children it's the rhabdomyoma. Uh, for sporadic cases of uh, cardiac myxoma, there are no mutations identified but for familial cases it's associated with GNAS1 mutation if it's uh, associated with the Macon Albright syndrome and there would be PRKAR1A if it's associated with the Carney syndrome okay so majority of cases 90% would be located in the atrium 
So, as you can see, portion of the tissue here would show cardiac myocytes. Okay, this one. So, this would be cardiac myocytes. And then, this portion over here would already be the, uh, the myxoma, the tumor cell. So, this would be the tumor cell here. Okay, so this would be the tumor cell. Okay, so it uh, gets a large portion of the tissue. Okay, so uh, the cardiac myxoma would be pedunculated, and so it's like it's a polyp, and it may cause a ball valve obstruction. Okay, uh, causing uh, a, a decrease in the cardiac output. So what we see here, this particular mass would show a lot of, of the stroma, a lot of the substance. Here you can see the substance and it is pink blue in color. This is composed of mucopolysaccharide. And then the cells that we would see are what we call as so this one. These are the cells that we would see. These are called the myxoma cells. They are stellate or they are globular these are red blood cells and this would be different these are hemosiderin laden macrophages so make sure that you are able to distinguish this particular case with the next slide that I'm going to show to you okay so here you have hemosiderin laden macrophages and in this particular area this would be the mass this is cardiac myxoma our last slide for today's session would be chronic passive congestion of the lung, which I think this is familiar to you already as we have discussed this in chapter, uh, um, chapter on hemodynamic disorder. So this is a lung tissue. You can identify readily the presence of the alveoli. And there is a presence of a lot of cells within the alveolar space. So we would see the presence of hemosiderin-laden macrophages, macrophages that would engulf the hemosiderin. And this particular uh, condition, uh, the chronic passive congestion of the lung would be seen in the setting of a left ventricular, left heart failure or a congestive heart failure of the left. Okay, Although we can also see it in the right when we have cases of right heart failure caused by a left side heart failure okay so that is what is important in this particular slide so uh, so those are the slides that we have for today's session so kindly study stay safe and